So another technique I wanted to show you on sowing seeds is a technique called soil blocking. Uh, so this is relatively new uh, and I get a lot of questions about it. So I thought this would be something new and interesting. Uh, and what it does is it keeps you from having to buy those plastic trays. Uh, now you will want something to put these soil blocks on and you're, you'll ask me like, what are soil blocks? I'm gonna show you, uh, but you'll want something. So. You can invest in something like a um, heavy duty plastic lunch tray. Uh, so this is something that as long as you keep it, you know, out of direct sunlight and out of the freezing weather in the winter time, these will last for many, many years, but you can use anything that's going to hold water. You can use those solid bottom trays, you can use pie tins, so it's whatever your fancy is. Uh, but a soil blocker is great because you're not putting any soil into a cell. Uh, and there's many different sizes of these, so this one would be equivalent to that 72 inch tray uh, that we showed you. Uh, but you can get these very small and even larger, and this allows for natural root pruning. So that's the ben one of the other benefits of using a uh, soil blocker. So we can still use the same soil uh, that we used before. Uh, so any, a lot of people make their own mix when doing soil blocking. They like to have a little bit more peat. Uh, some people uh, just like to keep it a little bit more moist, but I found that the exact same soil uh, and the same moisture can work for both soil blocking as well as uh, your normal plastic trays. And so one thing that is going to be a little different, and I'm going to contradict myself a bit with the soil blocker, is that you are to a degree packing the soil in. And so this is a lot like making sand castles at the beach, right? When you go, you're packing that sand down into a pail, you're flipping the pail over and you've got this you know, beautiful turret on your castle. Uh, this is the exact same concept. It's kind of like a cookie cutter. Uh, so sometimes you do actually wanna press down into these soil blocking cells, just slightly. Uh, and that's really just to make sure they keep really full. The reason we can do this with a soil blocker and not a normal plastic tray is because uh, these blocks are not gonna be surrounded by plastic, so they're surrounded by air. So you're gonna press really hard down in there, pack it full. I like to keep things neat and tidy and just kind of brush off that excess. And then all you're gonna do is bring it over to your tray and just pop them out. And these uh, are pre-dibbled. You can see these little dibbles here. So we've got these holes uh, and these come in many sizes. You know, you can get more on either end. Um, this one's one, two, three, four, five. So we can go down this way and we can even add a row um, this direction. So you'll want to think about that when you think about the size you buy. Uh, so there's multiple ways that you can uh, kind of finish these guys off. Uh, you can sprinkle soil over top of them, so you'll plant your seed, you can sprinkle the soil just like you would in a normal tray. Uh, another option that I found to be uh, pretty quick and works really well for smaller seeds that are towards the surface is we just put them in this dibble hole, we put the seed in there, and then you take some fine ground vermiculite and you just cover it. So this will help retain the moisture uh, and is really helpful with those small seeds who have uh, issues getting through that soil crust that can sometimes form. Uh, and so this keeps the moisture there uh, without making it difficult to get through. It's not really expensive and you can just quickly go over them and then these guys are ready to go. So another difference when you're doing soil blocking uh, versus trays is that you're going to water differently. So when you're using trays, you can just take a, a hose and you can water over top uh, most of the time. Uh, but with soil blocks, if you were to water uh, over top, the, the pressure of that, that water uh, can be a little bit too much and can break those blocks apart. So you're actually going to water just in the tray around them. And what happens is uh, this soil, depending on how dry it is, will quickly soak up that water. Uh, and what you don't want is that water to sit there for too long. So, you know, if you come back 10 minutes later and there's still a lot of water sitting in there, then your blocks were probably plenty moist to begin with and you can dump some of that water out. Uh, and this soil was nice and moist when we did these blocks. So normally I wouldn't water them, but uh, when they do start to get dry, you're just watering. Um, you can do, use your hose and you're just watering right around the blocks. 
Another difference with the soil blocks is that you will always be watering from the bottom in this way versus when we were using the solid bottom trays with the cells, uh, right, you're eventually going to move those trays into, you know, something that drains much better. You're always going to be bottom watering these guys uh, and they should be soaking up that water and even these ones are, are starting to soak that up. Uh, but you're always going to bottom water these and then the benefit is that once the roots have taken over these soil blocks they'll be nice and firm uh, and you are just going to take these and put them right into the ground and so that's a benefit versus having to pop those plants out of their cells and sometimes you disrupt the roots a lot doing that uh, versus with soil blocks you're just grabbing them right off here putting them into the ground with little to no root disturbance and thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked our video, please hit like down there at the bottom and feel free to comment with any ideas you have for future videos. If you have any other questions, just visit your local county extension office and they will be happy to help you.